I've been informed that your leash is in need of a yank, my pet. Clause G, Section 9, states that Target shall continue to listen to more monsters, madness, and magic. Ta-ta. All right, folks, welcome to the Monsters Madness and Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Justin, here with a quick word before we dive in. Now, in this episode, I chat with actor Tamron Payne about method acting, Mazora, voice acting versus motion capture, theater, and more. As always, thank everyone for listening. If you'd like to help us grow and you're listening on your podcasting platform of choice, please leave us a review. And if you happen to be watching on YouTube, leave us a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Anyway, without further ado, here you go. Tamron, take us back in time. You're a youngster. Uh, were you a book reader, fort builder, troublemaker, or all the above? <laughs> <laughs> I was not a book reader. <laughs> I was not that sensible. I probably began as a fort builder mm -hmm. and moved into troublemaker and then had a renaissance back into fort building. <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts did you grow up? I was, I was in Bournemouth on the south coast. Um, mm. So it's lovely, like golden beaches and we have the new forest as well. So like wild ponies and stuff. So oh. country girl. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of places to build a fort then. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so were I know your mom's off to the side. Were either your parents were they involved in the business or artistically inclined at all? Kind of, kind of not. So mum was a professional dancer. Mm. So I got that sort of expression from her. And dad was not in the creative industries at all, but he at home would always do funny voices. Um, he loved the Goonies, he loved Spike Milligan, loved mm. uh, Monty Python. I was brought up on very silly English humour and he would kind of do all these little accents and voices. So looking back now, I can see that I probably got that from him. Mm. Yeah. So what music was playing around the house when you were growing up? What kind of music Ooh, were you into? A good question. Dad would play like Pink Floyd, Dire Straits, like very kind of like psychedelic rock, which... I didn't really know at the time, but now I very much appreciate that that was kind of what I was listening to growing up. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. So when you think back to formative films and TV shows that you grew up on, what comes to mind? Oh, my goodness me. Um, to be honest, the thing that mostly comes to mind is being a 90s kid and um, having VHS and waiting every Christmas and birthday um, it, but it was it was very mainstream. I was a bit of a Disney kid. I was just waiting for the next Disney film. A lot of Disney films. And my other favorite kids film is Hook. I love Hook. I oh. think Hook is a, perf is a perfect film. So this is uh, something I like to ask everyone just because you never know. Uh, what scared you as a kid? What scared me as a kid? Same thing that scares me now, the dark. Mm. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even gotten over it. Um <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm better, but I'm still a little bit like freaked out. And it's more my imagination of what could be there. It's not about a specific thing. It's the it's the possibility that something could be there lurking. And it's just the feeling of something being there and watching me. I think mm. that really freaks me out. And yeah, has always done. Yeah, it's more like being in a dark room. I would never have like my dressing gown hanging up on the door. Right. Like, use that. Yeah, really basic, but yeah. Got to have your feet on other covers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a, like a, maybe an aha or an, a, a eureka moment that you can point to to where you decided to give acting a try for the first time? Yeah, yes, I do. Um, I was not really into acting at all, as even as a teenager. I started really late, um, but we had a show that was going on and I was doing the makeup for it. It was Les Mis. Um, I was doing some like bruising for it and stuff, like some stage makeup. And I just remember it was the first time I'd ever really gotten involved with anything like that. And I was backstage and I looked through the curtains at the stage and the audience and the lights and was like, you know, when you just have that instinctual knowing. It's like, that feels really magical. Maybe I want to be 
there I don't know and it was just that like initial curiosity and then I had to kind of like pick my subjects and I kind of just went for it like I loved art and I couldn't do art and drama and I was like you know what there's just something telling me to do this and yeah it was it was the right call so yeah so what was your very first time on stage after that yeah, my very first time was um, doing a little drama competition at school. Um, we had to pick a play and in our group, no one knew one. And I knew the importance of being earnest, um, which is a really lovely little comedy. Um, and yeah, but I just decided to kind of take the helmet and, and direct it for everyone. And yeah, like just just being on stage doing that was it was just such a laugh, you know, and that just really ignited that moment. So, yeah. Did you ever have to deal with stage fright or anything like that? I'm very lucky that I do feel able to, I, I get nerves as everyone does, but I've had to just tell myself that I convert it into being excited. So I just, I just say, okay, I'm now really excited. And as long as I know my first line <laughs> for whatever I'm doing, <laughs> I'll be fine. I just, I just need to know that first line and then I then I'll I'll go. Um but yeah, it's just it's just like training yourself and just having that like knowledge that you can change that energy to make it useful for you. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, that's how I deal with it. Yeah. So, you know, while you were in school and such, what did you have any favorite roles that you played while you were on stage? Anything that stands out to you? Mm, oh my goodness well since since being at school I would say because I didn't do a lot at school but I I loved being Olivia in Twelfth Night that was really fun that was really fun like everyone was so funny in that cast and um I love Shakespeare so it was it was wonderful to be like in central London and playing that role and normally like Olivia is you know just a bit silly and you know she is kind of doesn't really understand what's going on she's kind of swept up in the whole thing but we managed to get some comedy into Olivia as well which was which was brilliant so yeah that's one of my faves I would say and then also I mean it was a tiny role I played a nun um but I was at the Globe and just being at the Globe was an absolute dream come true because I, I remember when I moved to London and um I went to that that theatre and I was a groundling we paid a fiver and watched the play and I was like wow can you imagine being here wow and then I did get to you're there <laughs> I was there I was there uh yeah so that was that was pretty incredible as well yeah and being a nun was cool you know <laughs> Fine. <laughs> nice outfit <laughs> so does your approach personally differ as an actor if you're doing a character on stage or if you're on screen or in a booth or what have you yeah, it, it does. It really does. Um, I mean, being in the booth is is so different. Being in the booth is so technical. And I feel like I feel much more like I am maybe initially completely led by the director, just completely like I, I just want to see what what they want from this, because the thing is with being in the booth and, and doing a video game, especially, is it's so secretive. Yeah. You know, nothing. Um, so you know as much as you could have an instinct you've you've but you've just got these you've got these lines that are yours and nothing else so it's not like you can go into the text like you would with a play and go okay well what did they say like what what can i get out of those words you know you literally go in on the day see see the script and you're like okay what's going on you know so you're so dependent on the director's knowledge and their sort of ideas for what there could be that it's much easier to let go of control and also not feel like you need to be completely prepared for recording whereas for a play you want to come in with loads of ideas with loads of uh yeah just like character prep like oh they would eat this for breakfast and this happened to them yesterday and whatever you've got that whole like um picture in your head whereas with this it's like okay we're gonna we're gonna do it as we go and and things might change and and um, they might get new information ab about the game as well about the narrative as well so I would say that's that's a main difference yeah gotcha so Tamara this is something I like to ask all actors because I feel you know to the general public us layman's non-actors the word the term method acting is a bit muddled so what what is your method uh-huh oh well I mean again that that can that can differ and I'm definitely not a method actor and um, in terms of like Strasbourg staying in character all the time I think it can be great to stay in accent all the time if you've been struggling I think that's that's a good idea um but yeah what is my what is my method I do like to 
I do like to write down a sort of a diary entry for characters sometimes. I really enjoy that because just like when you write your own diary or like um, journaling in general, you don't know what you're going to write. You might have something that you wanted to write about because it was good or it was terrible. But then other stuff comes out and it's a it's a lovely way of discovering a character. So I really enjoy that. Um, there's lots of things you can do in the rehearsal room, but that is something that I enjoy doing on my own. Um, yeah, just fleshing out the character in that way. And, you know, improvising with other actors. If you're doing a play or some TV or something, like just improvising a normal day or what happened before the scene as well. I think that's really cool. So that's kind of, you know, going down the road of method, but it's not, it, yeah, it's not living and breathing. The mm. character. There's also a thing called, um, I forget now the, the proper name for it, but where you swap in someone that you know and have a connection with for the person. So while you're looking at the other actor, you would imagine said person that you know where that thing did happen or something similar. So you can kind of like shoehorn it in um, instead of like really looking at, the actor in front of you if that makes sense yeah. uh, which you cannot do for video games because you are literally looking at a monitor of, <laughs> of time and imagining that they are a person or a monster or whatever they <laughs> whatever magical creature they are <laughs> <laughs> so that diary bit you mentioned I a lot of actors mentioned that they may write a journal or, or diary or what have you is that uh is that something that you pick up in school or is that just you think that's just yeah. a typical tip that you get um, I think at drama school we did it. Mm. Uh, we definitely did different forms of it. I remember we were doing like emotional recalls, so kind of like getting into very big emotional states. Um, and we would write a letter to someone and it was very, yeah, it was like a real tearjerker. So kind of, yeah, writing to people, it, for some reason it, it brings up stuff from the depths. Yeah. yeah. So how did you land, you know, you're on stage and you're going to uh, drama school and whatnot? How did you land that first screen role? Ooh, the first screen role was a long old process and a really good lesson in letting go of control as well. Because I think when you're sort of, if you, if you go to drama school or you're just young and you're really hungry, it, it means so much. And you really like this, it felt like my whole world was like, I need to act, you know? And um, anyway, I had, I had done my um, screen showcase at BAFTA so there'd been some um, agents and people come to that, um, got picked up. And like the first audition um, that we we did was um, for a soap. And so, you know, it's it was a massive casting call to to just find the next new young people for this this soap. Um, and so obviously I just thought, well, they're going to see loads. They're going to see hundreds of people, if not thousands, whatever. Didn't think anything of it. I mean, it went well. I kind of went in back in the days of um, in-person auditions, <laughs> <laughs> everything on a screen. I actually went in and met the casting director in person, um, read read some stuff with them and months went by, months went by and I completely, um, I forgot about it actually for a bit. And then I was a bit just sad. I was like, oh, it would have been really cool. And I saw my agent at this, um, sh at this BAFTA showing and was like, oh, it's a shame that that didn't, nothing came of that. And she was like, oh no, you're still in the running. You're still in the running, but hadn't told me. So, um, I was like, oh, it was like two months ago or something, you know. So obviously, you just forget about these things. You've got to move on, otherwise, you go crazy. And I was like, oh wow. So then I went back in, did another round, and then was like going through. And then there was, I think there was four rounds all in all for this for this TV role, which was which was crazy, um, but amazing, amazing as a first kind of process. Um, yeah. And so then we had the kind of the screen test where you get all your makeup and hair and your costumes on and you're really like in on their set for their TV show, you know, and um, paired up. And yeah, um, that was a long old process. But yeah, it was amazing. It's funny that your first uh, your first screen role was a soap, because what I hear from soap actors is that it's not typical television shooting schedules and all that stuff at all. It's more akin to theater. It's what I've heard. <laughs> It's like the Olympics of TV <laughs> in, in a way. I mean, obviously, like, you know, some things are better, some things are not so good. Like, it's all subjective, let's say, being super diplomatic. Um, but I loved it. It, it, was, it was hard work is what it was. It really mm. puts you to your paces. So I was grateful to have that as my first job because then anything after that, you're shooting 16 pages a day. Like, it's there's only one show 
in the in England I know of that shoots more pages than Hollyoaks a day. So it was it was hardcore. Um, and also like script can change on the day. I can be in the makeup chair and it's like, oh, here's a new speech. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, there's a lot to to um, to work with. Um, but that's great, you know, because like I say, after that, going on to another TV show where, you know, you're doing 10 pages a day and it's just like, you know, and just more of that normal pace of like you're waiting around for hours. You go and do a scene. You're waiting around. Um, feels like such luxury. Yeah. Mm. And are you recording multiple episodes a week at the time? Yeah, it goes all over the place because it's it's very much about logistics of actors, um, of of um, locations, of all sorts of different things. So it's just whatever fits at that time. Yeah. So you could have like, you know, your timeline at least, but but you could. Yeah. You're jumping from from one month to the next. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so was it your goal to break into the voiceover motion capture world or did it happen sort of naturally? <laughs> It, it absolutely was such a not random thing. I loved my voiceover classes at drama school, loved them, had real real fun just kind of like learning the microphone technique, doing accents. Like I just think it was also that I loved my teacher. So I just remembered having a lovely time, but was never really a kind of a goal as such. Um, didn't really know it even existed properly before I went to drama school, you know? Mm. And so and then I did Hollyoaks for a couple of years and I was coming out and I was like, hmm, I've got to think about, you know, supporting myself and and what what do I want to do when I when I come out of this? Um, and I thought, oh, I could make a voice reel. And it was very like, hmm, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I kind of went, yeah, I'll do that, you know, whatever. And, you know, when something is just like mm, meant to be, I don't love saying meant to be because I think we have agency over what happens. But suits you let's say right in a way it was one of those things um I wrote to some agents and bish bash bosh signed with one of them very luckily and I've been with the same agent this whole time and didn't know mocap existed didn't didn't know about video games because I wasn't allowed to play them as a kid Mm. um so I've never played them up until now because I'm now playing bg3 um on twitch which is crazy (laughs) (laughs) the whole world has really opened up um but yeah, so it, it was very much like, oh, okay, I'm going to go and do this little like, um, you know, foreign language thing or this little um, advert or, or audio book. And these, these things started building up. And suddenly I'm just busy with that, let alone the acting. I'm I'm like full time doing the voiceover. And it's so, so grateful because the people are lovely um, and you just get to play the best characters. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I might not get to do that um on stage or you know on tv so yes it's it's been incredible but it very much snuck up on me yeah Mm. would you say the majority of your voice work has been in the booth or motion capture oh in the booth Mm. the motion capture I mean Losa in Divinity um I did one scene for that in in motion capture um and then Mazora happened kind of after that um where I, I had done some face cap and you know like the odd scene but but nothing as big as as Boulder's Gate and so having all my lines in in mocap has just been amazing because I'm a really physical performer like I've done a lot of dance um you know my stage combat and um, martial arts and yoga and everything so for me to be like okay I'm now completely this this person this this devil um (laughs) (laughs) was was awesome yeah really really cool (laughs) so your first time you just mentioned it working for larian was divinity so how did that opportunity come about for you yeah do you know what it was a while ago i think it was like 2017 and i'm sure what happened was that they sent out a big gold casting pack and they they keep it quite open-ended which is lovely um to be like hey um try whatever you think you're you're suited for um these are the accents this this is the age range of this character and they'll give you a little breakdown of uh, of kind of an idea of what they want um and so you just do whatever you think you're right for um and so i'm guessing that that i did probably more than one or two i would have done as many as possible <laughs> um but apparently sarah who was my writer just heard my voice and was like that is losa so mm. yeah <laughs> so you're would would you say that did you have a typical audition coming back for Baldur's Gate 3 or was that 
sort of previous relationship already establishing they brought you on board because they knew what you could do it, well, it wasn't like they kind of said to me oh would you play Mazora absolutely not it was much more like secretive and I'm pretty sure I remembered set, again sending off multiple voices I remember there was something that was probably shadow heart there was some sort of princessy vibe um and there was like regal vibes and oh loads of things um and then when I went in to record I don't think that I knew the character's name I just mm. remember being like they were like can you sit down and be like locked in a pod and I was like sure um so I was just like recording the scene and then like COVID happened and so it all went away and I thought oh that's the end of that and then came back and then it was like right can you just be like locked in a pod and I was like I know this scene and um then they kind of gradually told me about Mazora yeah but it mm. all gradually kind of was filtered through to me yeah so how much of the uh you know, behind the scenes process that we don't see, how much did that change with Larian from uh, your first experience with a uh, divinity to Baldur's Gate three? Yeah, um, well, very different because um, obviously with doing it all in mocap, it's it is a very different process. So, so um, with Losa, uh, I was primarily directed by Josh Whedon, who's awesome. Shout out to Josh. Um, <laughs> And then with uh, Baldur's Gate, it was multiple directors a lot more. So I was speaking to lots lots of different people through the wall, through the glass, <laughs> but also not just one director. So because of the mocap, you've got the, the voice director, let's say, story, voice, technical voice stuff, performance, so movement, sort of embodying the character. Then you've got the, the motion capture person dealing with the, the suit and you've got sound mm. as well. So it's it's four people minimum in in there with you. So very very different. You're you're sort of in your brain being an octopus. You know you you're really like okay I've got to think about don't let the gloves rustle when you're doing like finger thing like f- finger movements and also like it, there's just so many logistics as well as the performance. Whereas mm. with Losa I'm sat down reading, you know, and I don't have to think about anything apart from how I'm saying her lines. Yeah. Gotcha. So once you realize or they tell you that this is Mazora and who and what she is, mm-hmm. what was your what was your initial approach? How did you want to tackle it? <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy. Um yeah, how did I approach it? Well, it was technical at first where um it was it all came from the voice and and just moving away from my my voice into this kind of more velvety lower toned slower more in control more playing with playing with the listener um and out of just those thoughts comes so much in terms of how it how it just trickles down into your body and um I don't know when I saw an image of her I think it was quite late um so I wasn't influenced so much by by um visual um yeah it was much more about the dynamic between me and the player um, or will let's say just kind of like okay you're my pet I'm I'm gonna really enjoy this you know and just mm-hmm. kind of going with that basically and then what I've said before is that a little bit of um, Liz Hurley came out from um, Bedazzled <laughs> yeah I can yeah I can definitely hear that <laughs> <laughs> that was fun yeah <laughs> so were you given much direction for her voice once you have it settled or did they, you know a little here a little there take it back here it's it, yeah uh, every line is quite meticulously directed it's not like changing your voice like once you find the character we found the character very quickly uh but it's more about intention it's more about and sometimes it's really it can be artistic you can come up with something that we all enjoy in the moment and sometimes it's really technical and it's like actually just hit that word we just need them to know it's about that thing um or upward inflection or downward or whatever it is um yeah, so it, it can it can vary, but it, it is very technical, I would say. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So a few weeks ago, I spoke with Neil Newbin, oh, yeah. and, and he was saying how he feels that motion capture is a perfect medium between the stage and the screen. It's more akin to theater. Would yeah. you? And now that you've ha- had some experience with it, would you can uh, agree with that? Um, I would in terms of because I think it pairs with the fact the script can be quite theatrical. So it's an interesting one, though, because with Baldur's Gate, 
the characters, I mean, especially like for me, I felt like my character was was a bit larger than life, let's say, um, and, and quite theatrical in herself. And she can be a little bit camp and a little bit fab. Um, but also they wanted really filmic performances. So I actually, I, it's not that I disagree with Neil, but like in ter- how I felt was m- her presence was very theatrical and large. Mm. But then if you you don't want to be ridiculously over the top, you know, because it will it might look a bit silly. So it's it was pairing that energy with more filmic movement, which was actually quite challenging because sometimes I feel like I wasn't doing anything. Um, but, you know, the, t- the slightest little little thing, you know, will will, um, will it's being picked up. Yeah. Out. Mm, yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah mm. yeah it's an interesting one and then there were mo- there were big moments as well obviously like her entrance and like the movement of the wings and everything is is very theatrical so yeah I want more of that <laughs> <laughs> that was fun <laughs> so do you have a you know a holy shit moment with Baldur's Gate you know when it hits you you know this is one of the biggest gaming releases of all time is, is it still hitting you <laughs> oh it's still hitting me like people ask me to do interviews about it I mean it's just so it's so gorgeous and um uh probably the first moment was I was doing another voiceover with some people that I I do uh stuff with regularly um and they said oh it'll it'll be um you know it's oh no someone just said oh you're in Baldur's Gate and I was like yeah, I don't. I don't know about video games. Like I know Larry and does like big things. Obviously, like Divinity won best game, so you know, I, I I get that. But the scale of it, and I think someone messaged me on Instagram. I don't think it was someone I knew. Someone just said, "How does it feel to know that millions of people have played your game?" Oh, I was like, mm, I don't know. I think I'll have to sit with that question for a minute. Um, <laughs> feels pretty nice I suppose pretty exciting um yes so yeah just just the fact that like strangers you know people playing the game are messaging me and then I've got friends who game who are saying I've just I've just played with Mazora like this is so <laughs> weird um but it's lovely it's 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 amazing I feel very very humble and very very lucky um to be a part of it yeah <laughs> well you said earlier you know you didn't grow up playing games but now that you are playing you know Baldur's Gate 3 do you have a, of course you appreciate it, but are you like mind blown by like how huge the game is and just seeing how it works on the other side? Yeah, I am. I My mind was blown the minute that I got out of character. I mean, character creation was super fun and artistic and everything, but when, when it then opened up into the world and the scale of the cinematics and like the, 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 the nautiloid thing, like, you know, going through space uh, and stuff. I, I was just like, what? Like, this is, this is, this is mad. Like, this is not just, it, it's like, there's all these different worlds and I'm only in like at one and I, I haven't even picked up Carlac yet. Like, and I don't, I'm like totally lost trying to make <laughs> I'm looking at the map like, where am I? Um, and it, it's awesome. It's, huge and it is mind-blowing um it's like bigger than a film yeah this is the thing i'm learning about D, and it's like you literally create universes like it can be as big as you want it to be and it's yeah it's amazing it's it's incredible yeah are you wanting to dip your toe into D D now give it a try have you tried it i mean i i don't know exactly what parts are not D and D of Bold Escape, but I can say like I really enjoy like the dice rolling and like learning skills and like casting spells. It's like <laughs> I like all the magic stuff. Like yeah. I like the purple <laughs> magic vibes and I like the sigil, even though I don't really still don't really know what a sigil is, but I like it. I like the portals. Portals are really good. Um, you know, like going to and from different places and um yeah, just being able to do magic. I I I um, chose to be a druid so I could talk to animals as well. Like, I love that. So, yeah, I think D&D would be super fun when I have the time. (laughs) (laughs) One day, one of these days. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So uh, what would you say is the best acting advice you've received and who gave it to you? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what? It's probably it's probably even though it wasn't great at the time because it set my anxiety through the roof um you need it like when I was at drama school and we our drama school shout out to art said lovely art said um they're very nurturing they're not one of the mean sort of like break you down and build you back up people they're much more like oh you were really good at that like keep going with that 
So in third year, they kind of changed their tune as we were getting ready to leave. And there was a lot of like, you may never work. <laughs> you may never do anything. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I've three years being obsessed with this. Um, and it, yes, so as tough as that sounds, I when I I have actually had people ask me about voice stuff in recent years and, and just advice and stuff. And so same with the acting. It's all acting really anyway. Um, just to say, are you obsessed with it? Like, are you obsessed with this? Is it, are you, can you not think about doing anything else? Is this what you need to do with your life? Um, if so, great, do it. The work will come. Like if you, if you need this, then, then great. If it's, uh, hmm, yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. There's so many other things you can do um, that will be really fun and great and mean something. But if you are obsessed, you need, you need to be obsessed Then then, then go for it and follow your heart. Yeah. Well said. So from school to now, you know, whatever you consider a, a most challenging project you've worked on is mm. the one that you lost sleep over. <laughs> oh dear. Do I do the diplomatic answer? <laughs> <laughs> I won't say what it was. Okay. I'll just say that I was in a play, beautiful play, classic play. Very happy to be in it that was produced um by a person that's not a performer and was a classic case of it being produced by them so that they could be in it and play the lead role and uh. all i will say is that that was very challenging especially because the lead role is a young female ingenue type role and i was in my early-ish mid-20s and was a bit like I had a lovely role. I played the moon. I played the actual moon. That's a that's a great role. That's a big clue, <laughs> actually, about what job it was. But anyway, um, it was a great role and it was very beautiful. Um, but yes, that that was a lot of the cast bonded over that that um, dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going on? Yeah, it's crazy. It happens a lot. Um, so that was challenging. <laughs> yeah, it brought you all together. <laughs> So uh, have you ever, this is something I like to ask everyone as well. Uh, have you ever had an experience you would consider supernatural or paranormal? Ooh, have I ever? Do you know what? I haven't, but mum has. She's seen a ghost. She saw um, a woman, and it wasn't scary, although it might sound terrifying for some people, um, but I wouldn't say it if it was horrific. Um, she was in bed and there was this kind of like nice older lady sat on the bed and she just kind of asked mum if she was okay. And mum was like, yeah, I'm okay. And then that was it. She kind of went away. That's pleasant. So, <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I would be petrified. The fact that mum was not like horrified is, um, yeah, we're very different. Uh, but but yeah, she was a nice old lady. So there you go. So hey, that, ca that counts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, Tamara, just to put a bow on here, uh, What's on the horizon for you? Is there anything you can share without getting in trouble? No, I can't. I'm <laughs> a FDA approved human being right now. Um, I am very fortunate to have um, landed a little role, little but cool role in a big game, big franchise. And it's really cool. And also it's working with a studio that I've wanted to work with my whole voice career for like 10 years plus. So I thought I'd finished it, but I've got another session um, and I'm doing that on Wednesday. So that's a nice way to end the year, you know, yeah. uh, doing a little bit more on something that's coming out, I believe, next year. And it's all something and it's and it's this and it's that. And I can't give you any details, but it's a game and it's a big deal. So when I can tell you, you will know. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Tamron. And thank you, Mom. You guys have a great rest of your day. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Justin. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. <laughs>